Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 27-5 and we're your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. We pick a topic, sometimes we get a guest, sometimes we get a guest to return that that has been on our show many times that we really love to have them on. Um, and we chat about it. We chat about the music, we chat about the games, we chat about just about everything in between. Various types of gumbo. Um, and Pernell wants to talk about food, but let's let's ask what our, our guest thinks about it. She is an award-winning games composer, audio person, working on several projects at one time, networking with the stars. We have Chel <sighs> Wong. You already know me. I feel like anyone that... I feel like anyone listening to this episode probably already knows me unless I mean like it's possible that people are like they discover this podcast and they listen to the most recent thing. But hi, it's me, Cho Wong, again for the seventh time. We can only keep track we can we can only keep track of this because we have um I named the projects various like oh Rhythm and Pixels seven is is now the, the latest one. So that's how we keep track of it. Alright, no lie, when we started this hard. show the first like maybe 10 episodes or maybe 20 episodes i had to keep reminding myself how to spell the word rhythm <laughs> oh my god really? i went to music school i went to music school and so guess funny. what it's a word that was misspelled many a time now for me that word is license <laughs> cannot spell license on the first try really pernell there's gotta be there's gotta be a word for you pernell right i'm sure there is but it throws yeah. me off because like, <laughs> always oh i see i know what it is rapport okay R A P P O R T, right? Yes, yeah. but for some reason, my brain always wants to spell it R E P O I R E. Oh. Wait, R E P O. Like rapport. Hold on. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Like R E P. I lost count. What was it? R E P O I R E. People that's like, how oh, I type it. And I'm like, like wait, that's not it. Rapport. All right, I I get you. I I get you. Which, uh, yeah, I understand. I used to I used to get really nervous having to write book rap- rapports. When I was in oh, elementary stop. school. Yeah. Shut up, I'll bro. Tell you, I'll tell you the most flim flammy <laughs> one, though. My old college roommate was a very, very intelligent bio major, everything. But the word he always would misspell is the. He would constantly misspell the. Not autocorrect, because autocorrect didn't exist yet. He uh, just would misspell the. And it blew my mind. I'm like, how are you spelling deoxyribonucleic acid, but you can't spell the? Like, I, like I can't T E H or like is it like T? That's exactly how I would spell it. Oh, okay, there's literally like only one logical way to misspell the. Like no, if you misspell wait, without what, putting the T it? first, you just need help. No, so what, wait, how was it misspelled? They would spell it T E H. Oh, te, te. Yeah, te. They would spell it as te every I mean, time. Internet. No, it's the. That makes me think elite talk. Like when I when I write, especially like long form with my hands and a pen. Um, sometimes I, 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 I write the next letter that I'm thinking of, which oh. is the next letter in the word, and it all comes out like kind of jumbled up. I do that I all do that the with time. my own name. Yeah. I'm like, I you know, like if, if I have to sign something in pen and then I misspell my own name, yeah. like, uh. if I have to write a check for something and it's really important, I, I, I start sweating. I'm like, I gotta get this right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, honestly, that's, why you print. <laughs> that's when you print. The secret is to print at that point. At least that's what I do. If that's, I need to really then, spell no, something no, no, right, I'll print. Even then, I still get it wrong. You should see my shopping list, yeah. man. It's terrible. <laughs> I recently filled out some forms for, like, I, I, I have a new dentist now, mm-hmm. and I filled out some forms, and I'm just like, Oh, Chell, oh, congratulations. Nice. 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 I'm, I'm getting a new dentist? <laughs> congratulations on your new dentist. Here's a card. Thanks. <laughs> I, unfortunately, <laughs> fillings. Oh, man. Congratulations on your new fillings. Wait, no, that's not. No, it's not. No, it could not. be worse. It could be root canals. No. Let's, let's not talk about this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fillings are cool. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's move away from the dental anxiety. And um, I used to have this recurring dream, but I'll tell you about it later because that'll, that'll just freak you out. So um, <laughs> I, I think it was our last episode. It was about pilots and stuff. No, no, it was mini- two episodes ago, actually. Thank you. Last episode was mini games two. Which was and awesome. So that was a callback to, I think, my second ever episode on the show was mini games. And we brought back mini games two, and that was a lot of fun. 
And so the reason why we're bringing back pilots is uh, twofold. One, it's because I'm working on an upcoming Kickstarter game called Whisker Squadron, which is developed by the team that made Race the Sun. Mm -hmm. uh, Whisker which Squadron is, is essentially a uh, procedurally generated Star Fox. It looks it's roguelike Star Fox. It looks great. It, it looks like so much fun. And Just it's got Whisker. You hear it. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Just and it's called, you. so the episode title is what now? It's, it's not pilots and stuff, it's pilots and pilots? Uh, yeah, because last time, I, I think I ended up saying pilots and stuff, and then we did more stuff than pilots. It ended up being like more mechs than like <laughs> yeah. flying. So then, uh, because I was like, okay, it's a, it's a flight game. What if we did pilots without the stuff? And then I think Rob probably named it pilots and pilots. Well, you're going to hate my picks for this episode then, but I stuck oh, with the theme anyway. Just not oh yeah, I did write pilots and pilots. Ah, I'm yeah, if you I'm did, it would be wrong. It has to be pilots oh, and pilots. Oh, past Rob, he's a really funny guy. Some no, that, God, that is the episode. It's pilots and pilots. All right. Wow, past Rob, you're so smart and clever and funny. Yeah, I'm so glad I <laughs> thought of something funny hours ago. All right, so everybody. <laughs> Let's start getting into some tunes then. Um, Shell, we're going to start with you since you are our guest. All right. Uh, I think the guest, the, the first tune I thought of was uh, I when, when uh, so when we did the the document to like keep track of uh, what songs we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not have this last time because I only thought about this time. I, I thought about this one track from uh, Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex, a game that was predominantly my main Crash Bandicoot game and I played it at a friend's house but one of the early levels in that game is called Torno uh it's called Tornado Alley um and it's composed by Andy Blythe and Martin Joustra back you're listening to tornado alley from crash bandicoot the wrath of cortex cortex <laughs> composed by andy blythe and martin joustra or joustra um, we were talking about on the break how like i've played crash i played crash 2 and i played crash 3 mm -hmm. but i actually never played the ones when the license kind of switched over which i think was wrath of cortex and twin sanity what do you mean um, the license switch oh i've never played twin sanity either new, new so, company took it over yeah, look, it wasn't Naughty Dog anymore. It was uh, I don't even know who the actual company is, but it wasn't Twin. It wasn't Naughty Dog. It was some other company. And uh, I don't know actually. At that point, I kind of dropped off and then came back for Crash Four because it has a number now. Um, so, uh -huh. like, yeah. but like I like the track here because despite the change in developer, though for all I know, maybe this is was still Naughty Dog, but I don't think Traveler's it, Tales. Oh, was so it wasn't Naughty Dog. I was right. Okay. Um, it still sounds like a crash tune, though. It definitely still carries that feel. Did you play this one, Chell? Yeah, I beat it actually. Um, 
So I, I played a little bit of Crash 3, but m more time was spent on Wrath of the Cortex. And then recently, within like the last year, I played the, the remake trilogy, and I was like, huh, uh, I thought I liked Crash Bandicoot more than this because the first two games, I was not having fun. But me being the stubborn individual that I am, pushed through, Crash 3 was more fun. But once I was done, I was done. And then, and then after I beat Crash 3, I learned that about the whole hitboxes thing and why uh, the ovals versus squares and, and that why it made it so much harder. So, so clearly you learned something and I didn't because oh. I knew nothing of that. I just know that Crash in general was a franchise that I also don't know why I enjoyed it. It's not that it was bad. It's far from bad. It was just I didn't find it special. Like it was very hop and bop at its purest form. Well, it was the it was a 3D platformer before Mario 64. So like the, the well, that's 3D, it, the 3D older one, than Mario well, 64. Thing, it, yeah, it was like 3D a fake out. Uh, it didn't have a it didn't have a formula yet. So they were yeah, like was, kind of I doing would, their own thing. Do you know what the thing, they though, called it? Like it? Fake, it was like a fake out 3D platform. That was the problem. Like well, the devs the called time. it our Sonic because it's Sonic, but you look at his butt. In the <laughs> yeah, sense but that, that was you before that was that was before Butt Sonic existed too. It was what is about Butt Sonic <laughs> behind the back? Modern Sonic running like oh, the time, like, okay. Before was in you the never movie. know when it comes to Sonic. I know about the <laughs> what is <laughs> it? The Sonic so Dreams collection. <laughs> the fan I know about community is wild. The weird, the weird orb racing one where there's like various weird shaped animals and, and <laughs> yeah. oh my god but like before like Mario 64 was still talk of like this is going to revolutionize platforming this is the thing that's going to put Nintendo back on top while PlayStation 1 is gaining traction so kind of like how Nintendo tried to use Donkey Kong Country to outplay the PlayStation PlayStation tried to play Crash Bandicoot to outplay you know to overshadow Mario to like we can do 3D platformers too. Check out Crash and like deep down, Crash is not a 3D platformer so much as it runs on axes. Which yes, it's 3D at its at a base level, but it's not Mario running in circles and just going off in the distance. Feels so, like an endless runner sometimes, but like but it's finite. You know, it's a finite yes. runner. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great so, way to describe. That's exactly right. Shell, you were talking about like like weird small circles or, or ovals. Oh, tell me about that. So I don't know what's going on there. The okay, Didn't so the old red. back in the old days, <laughs> hitboxes were all rectangles, and so running and jumping onto platforms was a lot less quote unquote precise based off of the character models and whether or not the rectangle made it on top of the other rectangle. This meant that it was a lot easier in order. Basically, platforming was more forgiving. Mm. Um, so Mega Man, Mega Man can sit on the edge of a, of a square with his foot. He can have a one pixel edge. foot, yeah. yeah. So inversely, modern game development, and I, I don't know if this is like one of those things that they look back on like in a postmortem, but essentially I think the, the more modern Crash Bandicoot games have like rectangle uh, or have like oval hitboxes, mm. which means that while it might like match his foot geometry better, it made landing on things a lot less forgiving in the old days and i saw a gif of someone like kind of momentum jumping in the original one and it looked so smooth and and intuitive in the sense of like how you would ex expect a platformer whereas i felt like uh comparatively the newer stuff you have to be a lot more careful and maybe i'm just bad maybe i'm just bad because crash bandicoot's really freaking hard it's a hard game but apparently according to people and not just me uh, and not my friend's uncle, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, like, actually, the game, the new games are harder than the old ones. When you, when you say the new games, what do you mean? Like, Crash 4? No, 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 the, uh, the remake. General? Oh, the, the remake. remake. Hmm. I honestly can't say because I played 3 on there, but it was also my first time playing 3. I'd never played the original version, so... I tried, I tried going back to the remix, and I lost it. I lost my temper, and I lost a controller. They're hard. Yeah, <laughs> you lost a controller? No, no, I did not. I was going. To, oh my goodness! I, I did play through. I, would like, I kicked, like I kicked the tar out of three, but that did not come without frustration because every vehicle level made me want to smash my head into the ground. Uh, and this um, is what this is, right? Tornado Alley is this like a shooter kind of thing? Is he in a little? Plane? So, oh yeah. So because uh, I, I, look, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a cheater. 
I picked a song in <laughs> Crash Bandicoot where it's like one of the special levels and you fly as a, in a plane and you gotta shoot something. I don't remember what you're shooting. You're in a plane, you're shooting stuff and there are tornadoes and don't get hit by the... I think you have to shoot machines that are making tornadoes. Okay. I think. And how so did that, Crash that's like even stuff. learn how to fly a plane? He's a baby. How does Crash... Listen, he can <laughs> drive a motorcycle and he can do deep sea diving and pilot a submarine. He's... he's, he's Fully clothed, so he's learned he, to dress himself. He's not fully clothed. <laughs> he only has pants. Well, he's half and shoes. Shoes are hard to put on. Coco is fully clothed. Crash Close is a uh, Close enough. Crash is just a shirtless dude. I, Coco I, wears Oshkosh. He would get gosh. turned away from many restaurants. I was gonna say he's welcome at my restaurant. This <laughs> <laughs> Outback Steakhouse. Yeah, he's um he's he'll be he'll he'll be the front staff. You know he'll be the the, the he'll, he'll be the host. Go on, throw some steaks on everybody. Bobby He's got a huge mouth and an enormous tongue. Okay, for now, we're coming around to your first pick. So what do you want to go okay. with? Okay. All right, so I ended up choosing tracks that were specifically related to pilots, but not necessarily what they piloted. So wah, wah, here's a mech. Uh, oh, no. This comes from the <laughs> game Warboard. Uh, and the track Wait, you're, is this a mech song? It is, but it's about the pilot. Not uh, mech. We're talking about pilots and pilots. <laughs> I thought the uh, whole point of pilots was to be about flying air or space. Like, no, you're, are you flying piloting, a, a plane or piloting uh, a vehicle? They're Cornell, piloting. you. I can't ah, swear on this show. An hour ago, I was piloting my Toyota Corolla. <laughs> you could have picked Rob's theme track A. Uh, that would have worked. Yeah, it's just Which yakking. Cornell, so. we, we need themes. We need themes. Cornell, this this. I, I, this is why specifically I was like pilots and not stuff. It's stuff being like mechs. Oh, Pernell. Pilots. All right, well, let's get into this mech music and we will judge Pernell later. <laughs> so this track title is um, Luella Augstein's Theme A from the game Warborn, composed by Luke Thomas. And Lu Luella Augstein is the pilot in this situation? <laughs> yes. back. You was listening to Luella Augstein's Theme A from the game Warborn, composed by Luke Thomas. And this is a Jimmy Jam that I adore. I've been listening to it off and on for a better part of a year or so. It was a perfect fit for this episode because technically Warborn, while Warborn is a sort of like mech hexagon game, I like Advanced Wars, but with mechs, hmm. the difference in this game compared to those other types is that the generals actually pilot unique mechs that only they control, and they are in the skirmish with their actual troops. Hmm. So in this case, Luella is not only controlling her, commanding her units, but she is also in the skirmish as well in her cool Xenogears-looking mech doing awesome stuff. 
and this just... theme is powerful. I love it. I adore it. It makes me want my own theme song. But when I walk into a room with a glass of bubbly, the sparkling water, not the champagne. I'm like, hey, what's up, everybody? Sparkling what's cider. Party? Hmm? A, a sparkling cider for me. But also, like, I hate you for picking a song that is not Pilots, but it is Pilots, according to you. <laughs> but the song is so good. What the heck? This is really I do, but I do, baby. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and Rob and I were both trying to figure out the multimeter, but I do believe it's 9 8, with, and, and, but specifically 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3. So I couldn't. I, I started and then I stopped it because I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to enjoy the track if I keep trying to figure this out. I'm not that good. Hey, but, since I don't understand what you guys are doing, I'm trying to hold back a Simpsons reference that came to mind when, <laughs> when you did the numbers, the 2 plus 2 plus 8. No, it's, but, got, yeah, it's, so got, it's, it's, it's Oh, go ahead. Oh, it's 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Is is how it works. Da 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 da, da is is the groove. Are you are you when you say that? Are you referring to like how I would just think of a generic one two three four beat? Yeah, but you, you couldn't do the two step dance to this song. I mean, this is like this is like um uh um like free form jazz, not free form jazz, but it's. Uh, so here's it's, a question. It's not free form my, jazz. It's just it's just relate. multimeter. Yeah. It's, so it's, this it's, might relate to what you. So this might relate to what you guys are talking about, because maybe I understand it, but just don't have the terminology for it. So when I'm at the gym and I'm doing like my interval workouts, <laughs> um, towards the end, when I need to really put energy into it and I'm already really tired and I'm kind of falling out, what I usually do to push through being exhausted is rather than focus on my actions, I focus on the music I'm listening to and I do all my motions to the beat. And sometimes it's slow. And sometimes it's like bit 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 it bit 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 it, and I'm like punching to the music that I hear under the undertone of the music, like the rhythm that's mm-hmm. coming out of it. Um, would that be a similar scope where it's like I'm punching to the dit 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 dit? So, and it's like like dance music is traditionally four four because it's a lot easier to to kind of keep your groove and keep your step with it, you know. But I I I think. I don't know. I love the intro to this song so much, and then the way it builds and builds and builds and evolves. It's so unique. And this is theme A. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wonder what the other theme. Like, other that's themes the are. danger to this. That's I'll admit. That's the danger to this game, though. And this happened to me in a lot of video games in general mm-hmm. too. Mostly like these types of games with the war groups and all, which is that you'll be you'll start the game out, and like the first or second track that plays is probably your favorite. So you're in it. Like you want to just keep playing because you want to hear this music for as long as possible. And then you get to a new character storyline or you get to a new general and their track plays, which isn't bad, but it sure as hell ain't that first one. And you just kind of drop off because now you're like, I want to be the other person again. They were cool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I want to go back. Like, I'm sure there's more content or there's more I can do with these other characters, but they didn't have that song. For exactly. me, it's like, like for fighting they, games, the music is your opponent's theme, and I'm like, I'm so tired of fighting Ryu. Why can't I fight a Rashid so I can just <laughs> yeah. listen to that song? Right. Yes. Yes. Where are the Bukis? Where are the Karines? Yeah. <laughs> tired or of like, you. I think about Guilty Gear in that regard, where I'm like, hey, oh, the, the music Bridget Guilty Gear. the Maiden theme. Like, like, Guilty Gear so good. Now you can, can yes. you like, I think in Street Fighter V, you could like edit the, the way that music was being played, right? You can either, so you can either set it so that you're listening to the stage music, That's which right. in general is, it's okay, but the character themes are, I feel like are in general better. That's kind of hard to say. And you can edit the menu to be whatever song you want it to be. So my song is always first Ibuki, then Kareen, and then after that, I never hear them. Yeah, because Karin, I'm just not in the menu long enough. Kareen's theme, um, like I think both of them. There's like there's like there's a couple of them. And then her theme on the beach, the was a Kanzu, Kanzuki <laughs> beach. It's awesome. I think Chell would I actually appreciate don't know the Karin Kanzuki beach music. I don't think you, you may not have seen this Chell, but you might appreciate this. Uh, I guess Rob posted in the group that our favorite guest is on the show today, and then Chris Murray said the unofficial third host of the show. It's go. me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Chell's like it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first podcast I was ever on. Really? And it is the, the oh, wow, I, I think you were the first people that ever had me on. Uh, Gwen was like, hey, some people want to have you on the podcast. And then I messaged y'all. And then I think I didn't hear back for a hot second. And uh, and she was like, oh, whatever. Like, don't worry about it. Or like, or she was, I think she said, like, screw them. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then y'all got back to me. And then I came on the show. I'm like, this is a good time. And we talked about stuff. And I'm like, ah. We are, we're, what's the word I'm thinking of? We're, we're, we're like, 
we're we meshing. Have, yeah, and we, we share similar opinions on certain things. And then there's like the oh, you play. I bought games? video games because <laughs> yeah. of you. Yeah, we're of the same, <laughs> we're of the same mind. And I pre- I'm, I'm glad you came come on our show. And I'm glad you enjoyed doing it because I think uh, podcast as a whole, there's a lot of similar styles and very similar shows of like you know older white men all talking about like movies and it's really annoying hey 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 ah. hey hey just saying <laughs> just watch out i listen to some of those <laughs> no i'm the i'm a black guy on the show <laughs> That's yeah, I, what I, I, was I, I was like hey hey no i was hey, being this show is 50 percent shows. white guy talking about things <laughs> <laughs> Not being quiet. Fifty percent white guy, fifty percent black guy, and then occasionally me. <laughs> <Very much shy. laughs> All right, let's get into some tunes here. We've got, um, I got, a, I got some music coming at you now. Some music from Pilot Wings Resort. I don't know why I said it that way. Uh, this is the hang glider <laughs> so music hard. from the Nintendo 3DS, composed by Asuki Ito. <laughs> listening to Pilot Wings Resort. This was the hang glider music for the Nintendo 3DS composed by Asuku Asu, Asuko Ito. And I don't recommend you play your Nintendo 3DS on a hang glider. But if you did, well, I'm sure you'd listen to this music and you'd feel well, I mean, super if, chill. If, if they're on that level, maybe they need that extra high. Like they've been hang gliding for years, they need the next level. We had an argument about words and about the spelling of aluminum oh and uh, and I was thinking of leaving it in there as like as this music's playing and getting really relaxed you hear <laughs> Pernell and Shell like arguing in do the it. background I, th- I don't think I'm going to do that I think that'll, that'll take away from the the feeling of the music maybe the Patreon people can get but if you're not going to put it on the track you got to mention what it was because it wasn't the spelling at first it was the pronunciation which yeah. then led to if the you want to hear this conversation follow Rhythm of Pixels at Patreon.com yeah. where you can join this <laughs> list of amazing people yeah all you have to do is follow this is a uh, free content you know there's no no payment necessary you just you I don't just, know how Patreon works <laughs> you just go on and you just type Patreon.com and then Pernell's there saying, this is how you spell aluminum. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> People get out, like, they get into the song, and they get out of the song, and like, why are we talking about aluminum? See, and, you, and, will, and either you'll never know, or the Patreon people will know. They will know. <laughs> they will know. I know. I could definitely flat out say, like, this is the kind of dialogue right here where, like, when people talk about their strengths in, like, communication, 
I think this is where it comes to full fruition. When you can get into a dialogue about something as bonkers as the spelling of aluminum right. and have a mm. full conversation that you're enjoying and you're boisterous and you're I mean, expressive. I know we're right? enjoying it. I don't know. I can't speak for the listeners. But if well, we're still so here, I've come to learn you. about listening <laughs> is that people like things that I don't understand. And I'm fine with it. It just means like when we did this, when we came up with the show and you can quote me on this, I was like, people would enjoy listening to us. Like I flat out said that. And it's, they do. I don't <laughs> oh, know yeah. why. It's a good time. Cool. It's a good time. I mean, I don't like listen a, to the show. I just, I just do it. <laughs> well, we should, I, I mean, listen to the show sometimes, but there, the, I can, there's so, <laughs> so a lot many. of times I listen to podcasts at like 2.0 speed. And this is a podcast you cannot do that with because right. it's music appreciation. Yes. So, you may you like speed it up in between and then slow it down. Sometimes. Like, sometimes the remember. very beginning I'll speed it up and then I'll get to the first song and then I leave it at 1.0 for the rest of the way. But Aww. because it's, 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 I, I just can't listen to it frequently enough because I don't have enough time, time because I do audio work for a living. <laughs> I also can't fathom hearing myself. I can't yeah. fathom hearing me on 2x speed. I mean, I get the arrows that would represent. Oh, I've heard it. This would be pretty easy to follow, but not the actual song. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. I've heard. I, I don't listen to the music at 2.0 speed because a lot of music doesn't sound as good. Mm. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. But my dulcet tones. I'm already speaking like a psycho gazelle. Just uh, speed that up. <laughs> well, here's the thing because a lot of times. So also, um, when, because I do a lot of introductions uh, in, in networking, I talk really quickly a lot of times, especially if I know other people. And so uh, when I do my intro, I can do really, really quickly. And there are people that I'm really used to hearing at 2.0 speed. And then I hear them at 1.0 speed in real life. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, just give me the information. I just need it twice as fast. And then but, but of course, Shell, so they let me tell speed. you about that thing I <laughs> did the other day. See, do, do, do you ever tell them that, like, you listen to them at two points, two, two, two times speed? Oh, yeah, yeah. And do they? Is, and is it because they talk slow, or is it just because you just want to get through the? You want no, to get the information. I, you, I mean, I am very particular about certain things. And like, as again, as I, as I told you all before the stream, I do fifteen hours of networking on in one day Wait, every so, week because I'm, I don't recommend it to anyone else, but that's just what I do. It's so, just, so, it's a time so really, it's a time really, you're doing thirty hours of networking every week because you're doing that <laughs> two times speed. Oh no! If you could, if you well, could. God, listen. If I could do twice as much networking in a single day, I do. Here, I've I've tried to listen, listen. Uh, so the whole point of why I was saying that is because I have really bad FOMO. I'm trying to consume a lot of information, a lot of time. But there are times that I've been in a Zoom and a Discord at the exact same time because I can't decide where to be in. Mm. Guess what? It doesn't do work. It, I, it, I was about to say I don't think it could because it I doesn't. Know I couldn't do it. It doesn't. Otherwise, it'd be a Discord Zoom network, and people are all talking about how they life hack by doing both at once. It doesn't. No, work. don't. It's not a life hack. It's actually really bad to multitask because uh, I think someone said, "All right, count one to twenty-six, and then recite the alphabet back. Uh, recite the alphabet. Now alternate between the two. Which is faster? It's going to be faster to do one task and then the other task, opposed to switching back and forth between two tasks." With networking, it's not a hard task. It's like I'm in a room for like 20 minutes and I get put in a new room. The Discord is usually more static and it's like, oh, here's a set group of people. Um, okay. Sometimes the room I'm in is like, there's not a ton going on that I can contribute to the conversation. So then I kind of tune out and I focus on the Discord conversation. But for the most part, it's it's bad and it's hectic and it's chaos and I don't recommend it to anyone. I do it because I'm a fool. You're like one damn what a crack with a year. capital O. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, you're going to be the first person <laughs> to pull it off. Well, we're um, our our picks, our musical picks are coming back to you, Shell. The fool. Oh, Shell, the fool. Which is uh, your your, your tarot card. The, fight the, the, the fool. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Oh, so this upcoming track is one that I have a lot of nostalgia for. Um. And I have a, a kind of story that goes with it, but essentially, uh, this track is from the video game Volley Fire. Uh, it is main BGM1, I guess? Uh, and it's by <laughs> Akihiko Mori.
back. You're listening to uh, the main background music, one, perhaps, from the game Volley Fire for the Nintendo Game Boy. All right, this one is so this was track Aki one. Hiko Mori. What's up? So, so what you're saying is this is track one, you suppose. We suppose. It's not the first song in the game. It's the first level. Um, I have a couple of things that perhaps. I can tell you about Volley Fire. The first thing is the story of how I played this game. Uh, my grandma would acquire like these cartridges that were like 20 and one, yeah. 40 and one, uh, and you would get these cartridges that that had like a bunch of small random games that no one's ever heard of uh, for the Game Boy or the Game Boy Advance. And so one of the games was called Volley Fire, and one of these old cartridges. And essentially, the basics of Volley Fire is like a versus shooter on the Game Boy, and there are like asteroid belts in the middle, and so you want to shoot the the opponent. And, you know, if you hit an asteroid, your shot doesn't get all the way through. Uh, so that's just the general premise of the game. But the song is such a bop. It's cool. I've, I've, I've never gotten too far into the game, because I was bad at video games as a small child. And by bad, I mean I was whatever. I was a, I was a child. But um, my other story about this is that when I was first breaking into this industry, and I knew nothing, like actually nothing, um, I was... Uh, trawling the OC Remix forums for help. And, and one of the things people were like, oh, what DAW do you use? And I was like, is Finale a DAW? And they are like, no. And they listed off a bunch of DAWs that I didn't really know about. And so, like, th to give you a premise of, like, a, a concept of how much I didn't know, but one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to do an, uh, what's the word? A remix of a song. And I wanted to do a song that probably no one else did a remix for, and so I chose the Volley Fire theme. That said, one other person, one other person already had a remix for it, and it's posted there, and it's cool and it's interesting. The one that I wrote is really bad, because it's just finale instruments, and I tried to write a guitar solo, and it's not good. <laughs> but, like, that, but that's the, kind of my connection. Uh, this, that is your I, first, I, I, this is your first remix. This is, this is the is first ever remix. I don't do remixes still very have often it? at all. Do you still have it? No, um, I've had to reinstall Windows on my computer, so theoretically I could like download it from the from the forums, but I don't. It's bad. It's bad. It's also a finale, we which hear it. we need to know. No, it's bad. <laughs> it's, <laughs> again, you can find it if you look at my old name. And my old name, though I probably won't say it here, you can find it because, like, a several episodes ago, I I was still using my old name, um, but essentially. The, 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 the remix, I, I don't do remixes very often, um, and even if I still have the file, I don't use Finale anymore, and, 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 and I don't have access to it, not that I want it, but essentially remixes are hard for me because I find that they're more limiting in the sense that you are working with something that already exists, how much do you change, how much are you going to mess with it, uh, otherwise it's just, is it going to be literally the exact same song but you're just transcribing it, or are you going to put your own spin on it, and how much of your own spin do you put on things, and so this song is so old that I, I was putting new instruments on it, and I tried to do a guitar solo. The guitar solo was just that. Um, I re I wrote better things at that time, at the t and I I don't know. I think I probably uploaded. It. You get if anyone finds it, let me know. It's bad though. <laughs> Again, it's bad. So I was gonna come. I was like, I found it. It's really good. You're like, no, it's no, bad. it's not. New no, Patreon it's really content bad. is uh, the long lost remix by Chell Wong. So. <laughs> it's bad. I, 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 I can, only I remix like a, a guitar solo three. doing well. It's bad. Going really bad. Well, like so. the Power Glove band. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So we are coming around to Purnell. This is your second pick of the of the, of the show. And let me tell you, this track is bad. Or uh, I'm beating that joke another gram. Um, this is a good track though. Um, this is another one that Chell will hate me for, but uh, that's how I roll, baby. Uh, this comes from the game Advanced Wars: Days of Ruin. It is Wayland's theme. Wayland's a pilot. Of what? A plane, actually, in this case. Okay, but, fine. But All cool right, <laughs> you're Wars. fine. You are. You're fine, huh? I was like, what is he piloting? A tank? <laughs> Advance Wars? Is he I piloting? Uh, is company. he piloting a squadron of foot soldiers? Huh? <laughs> I'm piloting sure a Ford Fiesta? You... I admit Are you piloting a Ford Cannon? <laughs> well, in some levels. No, I made sure to specifically choose a CEO that is actually a pilot in this case, as opposed to like any of the other ones that I could have chosen. So this is Wayland's theme titled Flight of the Coward from the game Advance Wars Days of Ruin composed by Yoshito Hirano.
welcome back. You're listening to Wayland's theme titled Flight of the Coward from the game Advance Wars Days of Ruin from the Nintendo DS, composed by Yoshito Hirano. So, Advance Wars Days of Ruin was the one time ever where, I guess, intelligence systems thought, we've been making these games related to war for years. We should actually make a war game that's as dark as the concept of war actually is. Oh, no. And it was apparently the least popular of the franchise. So there you go. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but in my head, I believe the game was honestly legit good. It's just, you know, when people got so used to hearing two characters send their entire armies against each other because they wanted to determine what flavor of ice cream is their favorite, well, people actually fighting over the fate of their countries is just not as cool. Uh, but I digress. Um, the game plays great. People weren't too big on the actual like narrative and all. But what you cannot deny is the power that comes from these delicious beats. Like this is such a great track. I need to get better at describing music. I got to get on the Rob's level with this kind of thing. But what I can say is I love this track very much. Uh, I'm a big fan of the music across the entire game, to be honest with you. But this track, along with like Brennan and Will's themes are probably my favorite. Also, Tasha. God, there's just so many good tracks in this game. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. What did you think of that tune? You got good taste in music, Pernell. You turn me on to things I've never heard before, and <laughs> then I go, yeah. damn. But also, I shake my fist at you. <laughs> <laughs> I like conflicted feelings. <laughs> I hate you, but you're great. I want to kill you with kindness. <laughs> I want to make you. I hate you. I want you to. I want to dehydrate you, but I also want to keep you nourished. Here's some <laughs> sparkling water. <laughs> I love how dehydrate you is is like the threat. So one of my favorite tropes is like rivals to lovers, and I'm just like yes, yes, yes. Uh, and no, I'm gay. That's not gonna work <laughs> out. Sorry. Oh, uh, no. Sorry, Pernell. <laughs> my heart. Uh, I can't but uh. <laughs> Oh, you frustrate me so much, I'm gonna dehydrate you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna write that in the script there. Dehydration. Then I asked like, no, my poor luck. It would be like someone uses like a friggin' Saw movie, which would just ruin it for me. Like, Don't forget to hydrate. That's the that's uh, right. That's 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 that's, that's, the, that's, that's the least popular um, uh, torture device in the Saw movie. You're gonna stay here. And you're gonna dehydrate to death. <laughs> you will die of thirst before you die of hunger. But you will true. die of lack of sleep before you die of thirst. Really? From what I hear, this is not going to be something I Google. <laughs> <laughs> not I something we know, know firsthand that, either, but... About the only thing I know about sleep and sleep deprivation is apparently the period where you go from being sane to insane is 72 hours of no sleep. Hmm. That's what I remember hearing back in college because I stayed up for about three days straight trying to study for exams because I had the stupid idea or the stupid belief that the reason why I couldn't remember things for exams was because I would fall asleep and forget it. Mm. Yes, that's really dumb. And I'm going to just state that now before someone else does. All right. <laughs> but, I mean, I, sometimes you can get in your own head and you feel like you're so afraid of failing. You're so afraid of losing that information that your brain will go through crazy gymnastics to get to, you have to do this crazy thing now. And that's literally what happened because I could not fathom how I was having trouble remembering what I was studying. Turned out to be ADHD like a mofo, but at the time I didn't know. So I was like, how can I not remember anything? There's gotta be a reason. I was like, that's it. It's because I go to sleep at night. <laughs> it, was, it was the strangest thing. It was leaking but, out my brain. Now I watched a documentary on a, um, uh, a race. It was called, I forget the name of it. It's just, it, uh, something marathons. And it's essentially like 200 or 300 miles um, that is all through the mountains and in, in some mountains in Virginia. And it is crazy because there means they're out there running and hiking for days on days, right? I can't even fathom that. And, 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 and they don't sleep. They just keep going and going and going. And like usually no. like one, only one or two will actually make it. <laughs> it's insane. But like by the end of it, like they make the as in they make they don't make it they don't get eaten by bears. No, no, no. They just they just they just stop. They just tap out or they get lost or or whatever. But um, oh no, the ones ones who make it like they are incoherent. It's so interesting. They're just out of it and they can't talk or they're talking. Yo, this sucks. Why would you do this? The the Barkley marathons. 
Um, you been, you, well, that's why people, did you know how it is with yeah, that stuff? It's like, like people to, always want to push themselves in weird ways. Like, I wanted to push myself, so I did try a marathon, and that was difficult, but like, that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm not going to do like that. Uh, there is stuff. a difference between completing a task and being gratified by being able to complete said task, and another thing where said task completion would leave you worse off than you were to do beforehand. Yeah, it's like, but the thing I is. Have, but that's the thing. When people take on these tasks, their belief is that if I could go two days straight hiking and jogging without sleep, clearly the next level is three days. And at that point, clearly three days might be their breaking point, which is why Rob said those people tap out. I was like, oh, this was crazy. What the heck was I thinking? <laughs> but I tried. And the one guy who makes it. He's probably out there uh, saying, we need a day where you do it for four they, days in a they, row. They only allow so many people to do it because it's, it can be dangerous, but they always allow they always allow one person who should not be there. And they, and they, <laughs> Is they that call the that spectacle person, of it? They call that person the sacrifice. Oh, huh? that, I believe it too. It they, sounds that's the spectacle. so bad. All right, so we're going to go on to my, uh, my second track. This is from the game. If we're talking about pilots. We gotta talk about this game from the arcade. The arcades is called uh, Sonic Wings Three in the arc- uh, Japanese arcades, mm-hmm. and America, North America, is called Aero Fighters Three. So uh, this, this was a sequel to Sonic One or Two. Uh, Sonic uh, Sonic and Knuckles. Now this is called Sonic Wings, and uh, <laughs> Sonic Wings Three. This is by Hoso Q. This is the alias for Soshi Hosoi. This track is called Overdrive Man, and I love the soundtrack to death. And you're gonna hear why. You are listening to the track Overdrive Man from Sonic Wings 3, composed by Soshi Hosoi, credited as Hoso Q. And so Sonic Wings 2, uh, famously, there's like a, there's like five or six different planes you can choose from, and they all have different pilots, different stories. And in Sonic Wings 2, famously, one of the pilots is a dolphin. Oh, and I, yeah. I always thought that was really cool. In Sonic Wings 1, there was uh, just like a, like, a, like a generic ninja. But Sonic Wings 3 <laughs> has has identical twins flying the same plane. It has a 10-year-old girl and her school tutor flying the same plane. <laughs> it has a, um, a cyborg person with, like, he's, like, half robot and crazy flying a plane. There's a priest. There's just so, <laughs> there's so many weird characters in this game. I, I think it's funny because when you first started and you described the dolphin in two, I thought you were going to say that there's like a sort of Shining Force theme where every game has that one animal that's a part of the <laughs> team. <laughs> and then you get to the third game, it's like we just decide to just jump off the cliff and They're just all have crazy. everything. Yeah. I think I actually I played uh, some music from uh, Sonic Wings 2 from uh, our last Pilots and Stuff episode. Oh. Yeah. He's a... No, that was you win squadron. Never mind. I was like, wait a minute. Is this like, game from the 90s, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Because I played Sonic Wings <laughs> 2 a, a lot when I was a younger, so... Um, and we were talking definitely. also, like... But, like and also, this, 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 this drum and bass style is clearly, like, early 2000s, late 90s. <laughs> but go ahead. Been, we, we were talking about, like, tracks that sound like this because... We all, I think all three of us pretty much agree that we haven't heard a track that has this sound, which I guess you determine is, is drum and bass. We totally. haven't heard a game track like this in forever. Yeah. And like we were naming games where we thought we heard it, like the style. And uh, Chell said Bomberman Hero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in my case, it was Gun Valkyrie. Uh, 
But now I'm wondering if anybody's listening to the show that has, has heard drum and bass sounds in their games or games they played. Well, Let us know because I want to hear more. For now, I did an entire episode on our show devoted to drum and bass music. Time to go back and listen. You can go, uh, I'll, I'll just give a, a few highlights here. Ape Escape for the PlayStation. Um, Ridge oh, Racer. really? Yeah, Ridge Racer Type 4. Um, was it Castle? Was it Crumble Crumbling Castle? Wait, was Pernell not there for this, this was, podcast? There's a mixtape that got released. Because sometimes I like to do uh, like um, the themed mixtapes. Uh, there was, was it Crumbling Castle on Ape Escape? I did Time Station. But almost all the tracks from Ape Escape are drum and bass. Uh, 1080 Snowboarding for the N64. And oh, what else did I put all on here? I put on a, um, actually a track from Robbie Reby. A lot of Robbie Reby is really jazzy jungle tunes. So That's amazing that my brain's not taking that. Because I've been, I've been playing Robbie Reby like off and on for years. I just love that game. Yeah, that's just some really, really cool music in that game too. But yeah, I, I love the style of music. This this whole soundtrack for Sonic Wings 3 went in this, this direction and it's really cool. It's definitely got that 90s hardcore vibe. It's not... It's not like modern drum and bass now which is kind of more poppy definitely more melodic this is like it's got that rough jungle sound with a really deep bass which i'm sure you would never hear it in an arcade coming out of those little speakers we're trying to push past all the noise of every other machine in the same room but i i I would hope you could but probably not like you ever play um i probably haven't played but you've seen seen beat mania in the arcades for now no, of course. Yeah, I've so beat me in the arcade before. Just I don't like it. When you play the game, there's actually a stage you stand on because they have the subwoofer kind of pointed at you, and it vibrates the stage while you're standing on it, so that you yeah. can feel all of the bass, even though you might not be able to hear it all. But then they also have the headphone jack, so you can actually just straight yeah. up say, "I'm going to just completely lock myself into this game." <laughs> yeah, because arcades are so loud, and then they give you the headphone jack to do that. Imagine uh-huh. if DDR pump it up had headphone jacks. You know how many injuries there'd be. <laughs> a lot of people use um, headphones for ho- their home setups. They just what they do is they um, they, they 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 tape it to the do, backs. You do, Joe? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see this speaker, but it's old and it's terrible. So I I I actually did a mastering on these speakers and I messed up an entire EP. Oops. Um. So I do everything on these headphones. They're Sennheisers. Ooh, They're nice. good. I trust them. Unfortunately, the foam inside of the of the ear portion has kind of uh, busted away over time, and so like there's hard, rough material that rubs against my ears, and it's not fun to wear. But that just or goes to show how well loved they were, and you can also replace that too. Most likely, I bet. I don't know how. <laughs> I have never found a pair of uh, over-the-ear headphones that I found comfortable, so I always use these little in-ear ones. Oh, I, I don't like earbuds. They I, over I a was, period of time, earbuds hurt more. Yeah, I'm gonna maybe. tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Look into that, and I only say it because, and Rob can attest this. The headphones I used to have before the darn cord snapped out, I was obsessed with those things, and I had the same problem happen. And sure enough, I did find replacement, you know, inner lining on oh. Amazon. I bought them sure. and I popped them off and put it in, and it pretty much was like good as new. Hmm. Okay, well, can you like DM me about that right now? <laughs> um, well, I wouldn't know, like, because you'd have to look based on your headphone type and all that. But it's okay. just that they exist. Like, yeah, you just have to especially go and for like because you have like nice like reference like 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 headphones that you're using. If, I'm assuming. So, yeah, there's probably something really specific from Sennheiser. Maybe. Maybe. All right, I'm going to turn... New life to your headphones. I'm going to turn this music down, and we're going to get into what we call the bonus round. Bonus round. Oh, the bonus rounds where we play covers and remixes and arrangements based on our theme. We also play hot, hot tracks from up-and-coming games, from indie developers... Chell, like you, Chell. This is your this is your cue. <laughs> this is the cue. Y'all are lucky. Uh, I mean, this episode is being recorded before it, it, it obviously I'll, is put out. But I thought um, before a live studio audience. Yeah. Well, if there was a live studio audience, they'd be lucky too. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not. So you two are lucky because basically, uh, this next track is by me. Guess what? It's me. I'm promoting <laughs> the game I'm working on. It's called Whisker Squadron. It's basically roguelike Star Fox, and it's made by the team that made Race the Sun, as I said earlier. And the song that we're going to play is the song that I wrote for the Kickstarter trailer coming up next. Or by the time this by the time this episode launches, I think it'll be out. Yeah. And you can back it today. So listen to the music. Back the game. 
pay. I mean, back that game up. Back let, that game up. Let's all get Chell paid, right? That's what we're talking about. Yes. Yes. Get, <laughs> yes. get Chell paid. Uh, That's the can, episode title. You can buy the game and the soundtrack, I believe, in as one of the tiers for $30. Nice. All right, and here we guess go. what? If you like this song, you're going to hear a lot more in the future. But for now, here's the Whisper Squadron theme by me, Chell Wong. <laughs> Bring Whisker Squadron home this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Coming 2004. Oh my goodness. Awesome. I, really, I like it. really enjoyed that. I loved, I really loved how it started too. It was a, a lot more of like the keyboard sound and then like you brought in that like kind of orchestra sound. That's super cool, man. I like and that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Star Fox fans wish they had a freaking Star Fox game in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> that That's is true. true. And I'm not talking about the, the, the 3D, the, the GameCube ones that are Star Fox. Oh, we did. We never talked about Dino Adventures about game. <laughs> the one that wasn't Star Fox, and then they put Star Fox in it. Yeah, it was like Dino Planet or some jazz. So yeah. is, is this track going to give us a little bit of a taste of some of the, the themes that we're going to hear in the game? So yeah, this is, uh, this is the Whisker Squadron theme. At least I'm planning on making this the theme. And I, I can't wait to extend this to be like a full loopable track uh as of now it, it it has a finite ending because like the kickstarter trailer is only so long and i wanted to end in a in a bam but <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah I, I have a lot of ideas god i am so excited to work on this game because there's just so much that i i can just really deep dive into like uh i don't know how much of the game i'm allowed to talk to about but I, obviously there are uh, certain levels that are in space that I, I have ideas for. Mm -hmm. There's some levels where you're flying over different kinds of planets, and I want to make different themes for them. There are going to be boss fights that are procedurally generated. I, being me, I write a lot of dynamically layered music, and so I'm trying to figure out, all right, do I want to have the boss theme be a set thing, and then have it change based off of which boss you fight? Do I want to have the elements change based off of, like, the kind of elements that the boss procedurally generates? Mm -hmm. Because there are different elements that, that are, like... That would be fun. You could so, try to do like what uh, Skies of Arcadia did years ago, where it changed based on the how you were doing in the actual oh, that's fight. Right. Like yeah, if you yeah. were like taking damage or something, you'd be like, "Oh crap!" And it would go into like the darker version of it. Yeah, yeah. That actually start like down. stop. It. Yeah, I forgot it's it. Like, did oh, that. now we're doing worse. But if you're doing better, it's like now it's the cool, good version of it, like the happy version versus the oh shoot, it's the danger. We're about to die version. So I have kind of written music that was reactive on like your health, not so much. But I think I want to do it. Based, I, I need an. I need to know more about the, the game. is still in development, so clearly, I, I don't know everything that happens yet. But when I really get to 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 really get deep in uh, in there, I will. I will have some sort of idea of like how do how much of these layers am I going to mess around with? And it, it's something that I love doing. I did it since Kine. I've done it basically in every game I've worked on, basically. Um, so be, you're going to get some signature layer f messing around this stuff from me. As some well razzle as, uh, dazzle. Yeah. And, and a friend was like, hey, are you going to write some Vaporwave? And I'm like, the song that I wrote for this clearly is not Vaporwave. But yeah. I am, I've written Vaporwave before and I really enjoy the genre. So. I'm sure I can find somewhere in the game. I have an idea of where I want to put it in the game. But I won't say where yet. It could be anywhere. But yeah, if you if you like the beginning. sound of this, <laughs> and you like the sound of the game, and, and you think, hey man, Star Fox and Roguelikes, that sounds like, if you like either of those, buy the game, please. Yeah, back the game. Kickstarter.com slash projects slash Flipify 
slash whisker dash squadron. No, we'll it's called links. whisker. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. We're just gonna say I'm, I'm, we're gonna have the links in the show notes. We'll have the links on the website. Um, so click that button and then uh, click back, and then that's all. That's all I gotta say. Click a tier on the right side, and you can be as low as five dollars. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be early enough for the early birds, but like the the game is gonna be twenty bucks, and again, you can get the game and the soundtrack for thirty. And then above that, there's gonna be more goodies and. You know how Kickstarter is. There's always good goodies. Get in now or get in never. <laughs> now, now, just to make sure, it's called Whisker Squadron in the sense that these are animal pilots a la Star Fox, right? Yeah, they're cats. Nice. Oh, yeah. I like they're they fighting. I hope they're fighting dogs, but hopefully if they're <laughs> fighting dogs, they become friends with the dogs because dogs are I cool, too. I can't say anything. Oh, could be Not bark, yet. Bark Force. Whisker you can, Squadron versus Bark, bark Force. Force. Oh, that would be cool, too, actually. <laughs> sequel to Whisker. Uh, I mean, we can't talk about sequels until the game's done, but uh, by the time this by the time this episode launches, you will be able to see the trailer and the, and the entire campaign, and I'll have written some stuff for the for the campaign and by written i mean like words and clearly also <laughs> music that you just listen to <gasps> so <laughs> and possibly bark force might show up to wish him luck <laughs> all right for now we're going to you now okay so i'm just going to get this out of the way right now the original game i was trying to look up a cover or remix for was techromancer which for the record oh, they don't whoa. exist so if anyone's listening that composes music, do a remix or cover for Techromancer. Show that I've game never, some freaking love. I've never played oh. Techromancer, but I know of it. I'm just like, dang. <laughs> That's a, I, it's a mech game, though, isn't it? Huh? It's, an, I know it's it, a fighting game, but... Yeah, it's a fighting game with mechs, right? Mechs. Yeah, it's yeah mechs, they're, all, they're all mech, they're all, but they're... Pilots, and the, fo- the focus is on the pilots. The focus is on the pilots, so it no, it's from, not. Pilots and pilots, yeah. It's a it's a fighting game. Look, the, the focus is on the, the mechs that fight each other. Yeah, but they're piloted by pilots and pilots. Shut and up! If you bring up the trailer, look up the even just look at the intro. The focus is more on the pilots than the actual mechs they pilot. Like no, it's, it's a fighting game. Of course, it's focused on the the fighting. <laughs> like it's not like you're fighting with the pilots. And the you're fighting with the I'm, the mechs. I'm, they're fighting for great justice. I unleash <laughs> Mega Beam. <laughs> they're docking justice. through the battles. Great justice. Uh, always, but, always justice with you, Bruno. Always for great justice, isn't always it? Always and forever. <laughs> great justice, baby. Uh, but what I ended up finding as my secondary, because this is another game that I think is a great focus on various pilots, because they pilot tanks in this case, is Valkyria Chronicles. And I did come across why well, it is a really, tank pilot. Yeah, they're tank pilots. Uh, I mean, yeah, it counts. It told actually technically is only one tank pilot, which is Welkin. Are tanks still, are they not drivers? No, it's just Welkin's the only actual vehicle user in the main group. Everyone else is on foot, but Welkin pilots the tank. Mm. Um, so is, is, is it piloting a tank if it's a ground vehicle? Hundred percent, still a pilot. Still Hold on, now, all right, I gotta Google this. I gotta Google this. <laughs> it's like pilot Tank? to, to, right, to pilot airboard or, or driver. Vehicle. All right, let's get into this. <laughs> Valkyrie Chronicles main theme, desperate fight, the guitar cover. Who's this by for now? Mako or Mako, depending on how you pronounce it in Final Fantasy VII. Mako or I'm sorry, Mako music. There we go. I'm sticking to it. All right.
It's like if Sonic the Hedgehog started solving nuclear equations, um, nuclear equations or something like that. Like, well, <laughs> here I go. Tails, hold them off. I'm going to solve this thermonuclear formula. The tails, tails did was, was was a mechanic. He was also crazy. He had to be crazy to be hanging out with Sonic, right? Oh yeah. Well, he. You know, I'm, I'm sure tails got you know exposed to like whatever crap comes out of robot. They're flying mini games why Sonic he has two games. tails. Huh? Uh, they're flying mini games and 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 Sonic, but I can't think of them right now. Sonic oh, should, yeah, I, should I do the reintro tornado. so I can yell at Purnell at zero seconds? <laughs> so tails pilots the tornado. Oh, oh, what? That's right. That was me. So, welcome <laughs> back. You're listening to what is this? Oh, the you're main listening to main theme, theme and desperate fight cover by Mako Music of Valkyrie Chronicles. And let me tell you, you <laughs> drive a tank. You don't pilot a tank. Guess what? If you Google it, you have drive tank. How to drive a tank? Blah blah blah. If you Google pilot tank, you get a fountain pen. You get a fountain pen, and only a fountain pen. And apparently. It's not in, it's not being made anymore, which is barely <laughs> sad because everyone wants to, they're like, what happened to this pilot? Anyways, you don't pilot a tank, you drive a tank. This is now, uh, this is, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's, this def- is totally not like the episode yeah, yeah, of like this language is, interpretation because like we've had, you're banned. <laughs> we've had aluminum, aluminium, we had tomato, <laughs> tomato, and now we're on. What it truly means to be a pilot, because... The whole point of this episode was pilots and pilots, and you drove a tank into this mess and said, <laughs> Hello, it's me. And, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you're not a... They did this mess and yeah. said, Hello, it's me. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Trouble. Oh On treads. God. I do. On treads. I do. It's a vehicle. <laughs> you pilot a vehicle. You do not. You do not. I do not pilot a car. I, well, you do, but no one says it. No, you don't. Cool. You don't. You don't pilot a car. A, you don't pilot cool. a car. It's like I'm a pilot. What do you pilot? Uh, a Nissan. No. <laughs> a, a Chevy. A Chevy Vindaloo. That's what, that's a what? what that has to be a new car name. The Chevy Vindaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It flies. You're a pilot. Congratulations. Well, technically, I guess if you're a speed racer, you can pilot eight. the Mach Five because that thing does everything. I, I but, would say uh, I would say the Mach Five. You'd have to pilot. Yeah. Listen, in uh, in uh, in Wallace and Gromit, at some point they have a motorcycle and then it gets wings and it's like, yo, he's a pilot, baby. He was a driver, and now he's a pilot because he flies. One to the other. <laughs> One to the Wait other. A... Way to pilot that motorcycle, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, let's let's Gromit. let's calm everybody down with a little bit of jazz. This is the Corneria Jazz cover from Star Fox, performed by <laughs> Eric L. and Jenna Renee. Star Fox. <laughs> A pilot. A Purnell. pilot. <laughs> a pilot. <laughs> Purnell. Pilot. <laughs> Rob and I did it right. <laughs> you did it right once out of three times. <laughs> three times, baby. That's a 33%. <laughs> That's a failure. Percentages. Oh, man.
Uh, you just listened to Corneria Jazz from the game Star Fox. This one was arranged and performed by Eric L. and Jenna Renee. And uh, bow, bow, now, bow, bow, now. I was loving that part. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, back. really, really nice horns. Really, I love the uh, the guitar. The really bright sounding, like chill guitar. It makes me feel like a makes it, it sounds to me like a like a beach. Like I want to hear it on a beach. I wanted to play along. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just expecting you to like just to pull out the trombone. Is it the trombone behind you, or is it a? Yeah, it's a bass yeah. trombone. I also have a euphonium and a helicon, which is like a sousaphone, but. Older, rarer, and worse. Um, <laughs> oh my. Yeah, but I mean, I wasn't going to cover this trombone, this fine trombone playing with my attempted to play along with zero practice and preparation. I was just having a good time. And I'm like, ah, yes, the trombone. We would have been around. We would have been around on, on for the ride, I mean. <laughs> we we, we would have stayed around. We would have been around. Um, I would have been dancing. For more information on a bonus round and for more information on Whisker Squadron, go to rhythmandpixels.com. We have links to all the artists' SoundClouds, Bandcamps, and Kickstarters, everywhere where you can get the music, buy the music, and support these artists. Thanks for joining us on episode 27-5, Pilots and Pilots, Pernell, with... Hey, 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 hey. Pilots and Pilots and Pernell's two picks that didn't listen. <laughs> but we've been it's hanging out. Happen we have been hanging out with our guest, our, our unofficial third host of the show, Shell Wong. Thank you very it's much me. for coming on the show. Thanks for keeping... Keep, thanks for, like, allowing me to come back after I, like trash the place i'm like what's up gamers and then we fight about driving tanks <laughs> that's part of why i'm glad i'm not, like I'm not, I'm not you're, you're very the best way to describe it i would say is you are you are the most unscripted of unscripted guests that we have and it's it's great because it allows it allows the conversation to be more dynamic and just generally fun like it's fun to hang out and chat to be perfectly I honest, to it's just you bring some Air Force great energy to the me. show. I, I, one, one, I was a guest on a, I did a panel, or no, well, first I did a podcast with Indie Game Business, and at first I was all, like, business and trying to be all professional, and then we talked about, like, oh, how are, what are your thoughts on Fiverr, and, and how they undersell, like, people doing work, and I, like, just eventually blew up into the person that you know me to be, and I'm just like, I hate this I hate and I was, and I was really mean. What's the thing we took? Huh? You took? You took? You like? You like? Get this! Get this thing off! Oh, I, I was yeah. I was ready. To, I was like, just just charge, just charge for the thing that you deserve. Like, stop asking for five dollars to do hours of work. No, don't do that. You're only hurting yourself. Uh, but the other thing, uh, uh, last time I was planning on telling a story about how the Air Force tried to recruit me because I was good at a VR skydiving game. And I thought I was going to do it this time, and nope, because we don't have a script. We just <laughs> we just shoot the breeze, and then it goes into places, and we learn stuff about about the aluminum war on Wikipedia, and how Pernell doesn't listen to the instructions about pilots. <laughs> I'm just doing my jitterbug over here, having a good old time. Now, it's funny you mentioned the thing about the, uh, the military, though, because if I'm not mistaken, that was a huge, like, Recruitment tactic they were playing in like the like early two thousands for sure. We're like, hey, a, you're all gamers. Hey, this is at a Counter Strike tournament, actually. Mm hmm. So twenty seventeen mm. at a Counter Strike oh, so tournament. Yeah, wow. they're still doing it. Yeah, I thought they gave up on it because they were taking a lot of flack for it. Nope. They were getting eventually. That's right. Now oh, I forgot. They, just they because, did later taking, because they were getting Twitch channels too. Yeah, just they because they're getting Twitch for it doesn't mean they're going to stop. <laughs> it's know? like it's like Lieutenant LT Smash is posting to you live on Twitch. <laughs> Come watch me play Call of Duty, and if you really want to feel the thunder and the rush, yeah. sign up and go to Afghanistan. <laughs> that's oh, that's honestly a real. It's a real no, yeah, mm -hmm. that it was skeevy. Uh, right too. out of high school, um, a friend, uh, a friend of mine, Henry. We had friends since we were like real, real little. Like, yeah, we both didn't know what, what we were going to do right after high school. I, I went off to art school and he joined the Air Force. And then, like, months later, 
was he was before, a pilot. Well, yeah. Well, no, he worked. He worked on the plane. He was a, a mechanic. But um, oh. yeah, months later, we went to war, and he was in Afghanistan for a long time. Um, yeah, it was wild. But he's retired now. That's crazy to say we can do that now. But um, retired from the military, and he's definitely has a. Uh, it changes your it either changes your view on on the military and and, and and the government either like in extreme different ways either like you're super pro for it or you're completely disillusioned and you can't stand at any of it and that's the that's the direction he went into he doesn't trust anybody and he should and my mili- and you should my- the listeners don't listen to this <laughs> my military friend was kind of similar came back and was just kind of like oh, I'm just glad to be done but yeah. it's a it's an interesting thing there like for me. I would, they would attempt to draft me at one point, and I almost did it because, quite frankly, I could have really used the money. Mm. But in the end, I was like, I don't want to fight for it. Just aren't mine. <laughs> so in the end, I was like, I'd rather just be poor. So no, thank you. Um, but but that said, I've definitely got nothing against anybody that does join up. No, of course. But not. at the same time, like for me, it just was not the right call, mm-hmm. and they were they were aggressive about it too. I had to fight. I say, I don't want to do it. I'm not trying to die for somebody else. Pernell, did, did you finish Battletoads? I hate Battletoads. Thank you for your uh, service. No. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness! No, that's just cold blooded. <laughs> that was wow. pretty much serving right there. That yeah, was service. Thank, thank you for doing that. Thank you for putting yourself through that. Um, before Definitely. we head out of here, uh, Chell, please tell our listeners one more time about the project you're working on, where they can find you, where they can find more about you, and listen to your stuff. Hi, it's me, Chell Wong Audio. You know me, probably. And if you don't, I'm an award-winning composer, best known for my work on a game called Pine, as well as Watch This Space, and more recently, this Kickstarter that is now live called Whisker Squadron. Made by the developers Flipfly, they made Race the Sun, as well as several other games like Absolute Drift and Evergarden. And it's basically roguelike Star Fox. If that sounds interesting to you, check it out. Uh, it'll be linked in the thing. If you want more of me specifically, follow me at Chelwang Audio, Twitter, Instagram, other places. Um, my website's chelwangaudio.com. Every possible thing you could find me on is in my link tree, which is link tree Chelwang Audio. Link tree is new to me as of right now. It's just a place that you could put all your links. I have. Let's open up mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different things. Okay. There we go. That way I don't have to put twelve links. <laughs> I might have to go to Linktree and make my own like Pernell at Pernell or mm-hmm. Pernell. It's gonna be at- Linktree backslash Pernell. So yeah, well, I'm gonna post it in the document. Now you can now you can see it. Thank you Bam. very Boom. much. Thank you very much. And if you want to, uh, the listeners, if you want to uh, talk to Pernell and I, if you want to uh, send us a track suggestion, if you just want to say hello. Or um, if you have a band suggestion or topic suggestion, the best thing to do is to send us an email. Rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. And for more information about the show, uh, full track listing from all of our episodes, access to all of our episodes and all of the stuff that we're doing, go to the website. (laughs) Rhythmandpixels.com. We also have some new t-shirt designs up on uh, our merchandise page, rhythmandpixels.com slash merch. You can support your favorite a uh, classic video game sound team. It could be uh, Sega. It could be Konami. It could be Falcom. It um, will be Falcom. It will be Falcom. <laughs> Get those designs and put them on your body. Wear those. Wear the. Wear those designs out in the open, in 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 the public, where people can see it, so that you can say, "I support these groups." Um, and it also supports us too. We really appreciate that. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. It's uh, if you just search "Rhythm and Pixels," all one word, will show up right there. And if you want to support the show in another way, you can go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. Um, as a member there, you get access to a prequel episode every week and then access to a monthly live streamed episode where we record an episode just for you over the live stream. And that is uh, the next live stream recording is coming up uh, uh, tomorrow, the day after this episode uh, uh, is released. Wait, wait, really? Yeah, yeah. Next Thursday for now. I thought it was tomorrow. No, I, I I thought it was next Thursday. Dun dun dun! I'm glad I didn't, want to, is, I didn't want to do two shows in one week. So hey, in that case, I'm going. Oh yeah, even I, I know about this. Whew. Even I know about this. All right, I'd cool. Read it. I'd read it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun time. This is what I'm here for. The chaos. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Cool. I thought I changed it everywhere. I just didn't change it on Pernell's brain. <laughs> 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 but um, so yes, yeah, so that's coming up. Uh, 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 next week is going to be our live show. We're going to have some fun and games. We're going to have some quizzes for Pernell to, to 
to test his game knowledge. And I don't the, even know what Thursdays are what, so I'm screwed. And it's all the music theme is tavern music, so bar Ooh. music, tavern music, that kind of stuff. Um, stuff you would hear, or stuff maybe that is based in that area in a game. Um, and then at the end, of, hang out. What's up? I said, do you know where sailors hang out? <laughs> oh shit, moo. Is that, is that Shenway? Uh, Shenway? Shen, Shen Mu? Mm-hmm. I always call it Shen Mu. I, I, I'm not changing that. I'm uh, probably way wrong, but I I've know. been saying that since I was like 19. It ain't changing. <laughs> um, we also like to thank all of our Patreon members at the end of every episode at the highest tiers. We'd like to thank Frankly Zappa, Mike Myers, Vashon8060, That Nick Walker, Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, Matt Holmquist, Michael Jennings, Davey Cakes, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, Sonic Medley, Taco, Harold Howard. I love it's just Taco. Like everyone's got a name and then we just got Taco. Uh, hey, it's the best name. Uh, Dave Taco. Taylor, Reinhardt Selkova, Andreas Milberg, Dan Loughton, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, Cameron Worma, Christopher Senstrom, Bobby Arson from One Up Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos from the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, and Brian Pitt. Uh, so thank you all very much for your continued support of our little show. And just to be perfectly, just to flat out say it on the show proper, I uh, wanted to say thank you to Bobby Arson for his very kind words that he posted and his heartfelt words uh, that he posted, uh, I guess, at this point, a week ago, two weeks ago. My time frame is really bonkers. There's a week. I wanted to point yeah. out. So thank you for that. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and so next week will be our live show, the most live. We're mm-hmm. talking live electrical. Interact. Talking, I don't know, musical guests, <laughs> the who, the who, the what, Wait, which one, and the where, yeah. the classic, the classic rock band or the Mongolian metal band, the literal group of owls with magic hats. That's pretty cool, too. You better believe it. (laughs) Magic Owls are awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening and for us rambling on. This has been Rhythm and Pixels. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. And I'm (laughs) Chawal. There it is. We'll see you next week. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. And remember, well, I guess I'll probably going to use this later on, but I'll just say it now because it's been a lot of time I've been thinking about. Oh, dear God, Robert. Um, so, you know, you deal with people all the time. You have a lot of friends in your life, associates, and people that you care about. And you kind of just assume sometimes that those people know how you feel in their lives. You know, I love this person. I love that person. I like this person. I like that person. But you never really say it. You just do stuff. And while it makes sense, because, heck, unfortunately, that's pretty much my entire shtick. It's a weird feeling. At the same time, especially these days where a lot of people have that sense of feeling where like love is just not there or maybe they're just not being appreciated, whatever. Sometimes it's nice to just tell a person, hey, I love you or hey, I like you or I'm glad we're friends or I'm glad we both like Boya Bay. Whatever it is that you connect on, sometimes it's nice to tell a person that you care about them. Even if it's for no freaking reason but to say you do. It might come off as weird. They might respond by saying, what the heck are you on? Is everything okay? Did your cat die? Uh, at the end of the day, once the weirdness is trans, you know, has gone away, the feeling that's left behind is appreciation and that little tingly feeling in your gut that just says, wow, someone actually appreciates me. That's nice. So just putting that out there, just express yourself more to your friends and family because people need it. <laughs> it's a needed thing. So... Ta-da! I love you guys. Love you too, friend. And I love you too, Rob. Oh, I love you, Pernod. Oh. Wow. <laughs>